All right, it looks like we're back for game four in the uh, low cap cup final. That's the League of Champions and Presidents, and this is the 1982 New York Islanders up against the 1977 Montreal Canadiens. Montreal, as noted there, hopefully it's easy enough to see us up 2-1 in the series. And um, game four here is hypothetically at the forum. It's being played in an alternative or parallel universe uh, on uh, February 25th, 1971. And Montreal, as you can see, their pregame rolls there going with Ken Dryden once more. Uh, 76 to 100, they can score on 61 on the power play for the Islanders. It's uh, 1 to 14, uh, 29 on the power play, and Billy Smith's going to be the goaltender. So, uh, with that said, we're going to kick things off right away here. The Islanders, they uh, really made a valiant effort in the third period. They came back quite literally at the final second, uh, scoring with four seconds to go to get to within one, but they just couldn't. Uh, couldn't pull the trigger, I guess, in those final few on a goal. They were ahead, actually, most of the game. They were up after 20 and up after 40, but uh, Montreal came up with a big third period. So we kick it off here in the first. It's going to be two minutes off the clock. And uh, let's see if we get a chance right offhand. Yes, we do, actually. 94, Montreal. Montreal, lay this is going to be Steve Shutt. Steve Shutt has the puck in the slot. And uh, Billy Smith's going to be tasked to make a big save here. Seven. That means Smith's actually going to stone Steve Shutt in the slot here. Just two minutes into the game, let me try to quickly note here. Um, even though it makes the video a little longer, I just, I don't know, I feel more comfortable doing this live, not having to pause the camera. Uh, okay, so let's try to quickly move forward with this. So two more minutes off the clock now, 16. 16 and some change. And there's going to be another chance here for Montreal. So Montreal, um, hot and heavy early here. It's going to be L. L is Steve shut once more. Steve shut this time from the slot once again. And he cannot be denied continuously. It's going to be Steve Shutt here with uh, just under, actually just over three minutes in, 16.58 the time, remaining in the first period. And Steve Shutt gets Montreal on the board and up one nothing early. I should change that right away. Um, trying a bit of a different setup here this time. I thought I'd put the board uh, horizontally. If um, if you like the look of it better, then I'm sorry that, I, that it took, took me so many games to... I uh, think to do something like this. So anyway, that was shot with the goal in the slot and L1D1 and in the assist. Uh, that'd be Guy Lafleur, right wing, and Jacques Lemaire, actually. So it's going to be the top line. A uh, shot from Lafleur. He's getting a lot of assists recently in this. And uh, Jacques Lemaire here, just 302 into the first period. Not looking good for New York early. Billy Smith's the only one who showed up to play. There's another minute off the clock, down to the 15th minute. Uh, and 98 once again here, so we have three scoring chances for Montreal in succession. And F this time, that's going to be Yvonne Lambert from the second line, but he's at the blue line. And there's going to be a rebound, however. Uh, let's see here on the rebound. That's two for the shooter. Billy Smith will actually be able to handle that pretty easily, but we had Lambert here. So five minutes in Montreal with the trio, three grade A scoring chances, because even Lambert's led to a rebound, but Smith came up with a big stop. And uh, we go take another minute off the clock here. So we're down to 14 to go in the first period. And seven, that's going to be uh, actually a chance for Long Island. So back the other way. Hey, that's Mike Bossy. He's been hot this series. He's in the slot once again. And Mike Bossy is going to uh, tie the game here at one with, uh, let's see here, that'd be 1444. So 516 into the first period. And Mike Bossy here. Lots transpiring in a hurry. They're, these teams are picking. Picking up right where they left off here in the third period of game three. Uh, it's going to be Bossy, L1D2. So Bossy from Trottier and uh, the line. Actually, but Gillies with the XL, so we're just going to give Trottier the assist. That's another tandem that predictably enough has been striking uh, hot and often in this series. So two more off the clock now. We're down to 12. And uh, 64, that'll be no chance for either side. Finally, a quieter moment here. Three more off the clock. We're down to nine. And uh, let's see here. Eight, that's going to be another chance for Long Island. So eight and nine, that's Mike Bossy once more. Mike Bossy in the slot once again. And lo and behold, Mike Bossy here. He puts New York up by a score of two to one as soon as I change it. Um, Bossy here with another goal. We're just halfway through the first period. L2D2, R5, that would be Trachier once again. And Bossy himself, the right wing. It's going to be Bossy from Trachier. And uh, this reminds me of a certain other game. I'm pretty sure that I shuffled the cards well enough, but I'm only human. Let's see here. So eight minutes to go in the first period. And uh, you can go back and look at the numbers in sequence and see whether or not they're shuffled well enough after the uh, third period of the third game. 
but I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. So one minute off the clock and then 381. That's going to be another chance for the Montreal Canadiens. Montreal this time with D. That's Yvonne Cornway, the road runner in the slot. And it's going to be three, or sorry, goodness, wishful thinking, 2-2 two -two here. Um, Montreal, that's going to be Yvonne Cornway getting Montreal even here in the game once again. And we are just, let's see, 45. So we're just 11 minutes and 15 seconds in. Already we have a high-scoring encounter here. Cormway with his first in a while, I think. Uh, L1-D1 in the assist. Right wing, so we're going to give that actually to line three, Mario Tremblay. And we looked at the center. It's going to be Cormway from his line mates. Uh, Tremblay with the first assist. And it'll be Doug Riseboro as well, picking up a point on the goal. So uh, just 11 minutes and 15 seconds in. Already four goals have been scored. Uh, three more minutes off the clock, so we're down to five, and let's see, we have 36, that's no chance for either side. We're going to take three more off the clock now, down to two minutes. Just two minutes to go in the first period, and look, the Islanders with another chance here. It's Mike Bossy going for a hat-trick, natural hat-trick right off the bat here. He's in the slot for a third time this period, and he does it. Mike Bossy here with a hat-trick in the opening period. He's already leading the league in scoring here in the playoffs, certainly with goal scoring. He's running away with it. Mike Bossy, that's going to be... Uh, I'm going to say line one and then defensive pair two. So Bossy, he can't assist on his own goal. He can't assist on his own goal. Is Bossy doing like a Tonelli the game before? All over this one, unassisted. Bossy has the hat trick here. It is Mike Bossy three, Montreal two here late in the first period. So um, Bossy unassisted. I'll take the seconds off this clock. 2.33 left here in the first uh, period of play. And we take three more minutes off the clock. That's going to take us right into intermission. So after one, it is... Once again, I might as well say Mike Bossy 3, Montreal 2. All right, back for the second period of play. It's 3-2 Long Island after 1, and it's Mike Bossy here with a trio of goals. Made a bit of a mess over here. But uh, sure enough, you're Montreal up 2-1 in the series. Islanders up 3-2 uh, in the game. And that's two minutes off the clock to start off the second period. No penalties so far in the game, and this will actually only count for um, uh, time off the clock because it's the first... Uh, Flipping the sequence, I guess you could say. And th uh, 66, that's going to be no chance for either side. So we take another minute off the clock here, 17 to go in the second period. And there could potentially be a penalty here, the first one of the contest so far. Montreal use E3. They do have a use of so Montreal. They're down by one. Uh, they're down by a goal, and they're about to be down by a player. They're going to the box, use E3 for uh, two minutes here, just about three into the second period. And the first power play minute, the Islanders are unable to do much of anything with it. And the same with the second one. So we're back to even strength here with 15 to go. We're going to take three more off the clock. So we're down to 12. And uh, 23, that's no chance for either side. And then we're going to take another minute off the clock. We're down to 11. And 61, once again, no chance for either side. So we're going to take two more now. We're down to nine, just over halfway through the game. Islanders up 3 2, 40. That's no chance for either side. We're going to take another minute. We're down to eight. And 51, oh, there could be some. Um, Something interesting here, for lack of a better way of putting it, we have penalty B, readings of it twice, five and five, five for fighting. So it's gonna we're going to have a dust him up here. It's going to be Rick Chartraw up against Bob Nystrom. I'm not sure if I like Chartraw's chances in that encounter. That's going to be big Bob Nystrom and Rick Chartraw going for five each here. Pretty sure it's Chartraw, actually. I could be wrong. Um, again, it's a little before my time, but I do try to keep abreast in the history. Uh, let's see here. So Nystrom and Chardra each with uh, five for fighting. That's all I do there. I mean, they're still going to play even strength. Uh, still, we have a, I'm trying to think if there has been a fight in this series. This might be the first. Uh, let's see here. So uh, it's still going to be eight minutes and some change into the period. And uh, 12, that's going to be a chance for Long Island. So Long Island here with a shot to go up by two. M with the chance, uh, as long as it isn't Nystrom. Uh, it's going to be his line mate, Butch Goring, actually. And Goring finds his way into the slot. And the Islanders are going to be up by two here. They're doubling their lead. So with, um, let me see here. How many? How much time did I say I took off the clock there? Let's see. I like this game. You can go back and check just like this. Uh, that was, uh, oh, that's right. There was a zero minute, wasn't it? So eight minutes and uh, 8.58. It, you know, it seems a little unfathomable, but we'll say 8.58. We'll say that seconds after uh, Nystrom went to the penalty box there, I guess the fight really energized Long Island and so it's Butch Goring here with the goal. Uh, Goring putting the Islanders up 4-2 and we flip for assist. Uh, L1-D1 so it could be Goring from the first defense line but left wing that's Bob Bourne and right wing. So the right wing's in the box let me see it was L1-D1 so I'm going to say the boss he took the shift with Nystrom in the box. I, I do little substitutions like that as the game's ongoing so I'm going to go with Goring here 
from uh, Born and Nystromini, or sorry, Born and Bossy rather. And again, just ask yourself what you would do if it were real. Ask yourself if you were a coach Al Arbor, what you would do in that situation. Pretty sure Arbor coached them in 82. I think he coached them through the dynasty. Correct me if I'm wrong if you happen to see this and know that I am wrong. Uh, three more off the clock here. So we're going to go down to five minutes to go here in the second period. The Islanders now up by two, up 4-2. And there could be a penalty against them. So XY2, that is... Um, Let's see, they don't have an X and they don't have a Y2, so we're going to play on and ignore it. Three more off the clock. We're down to two minutes in the second period. And, uh, okay, 20, so that's no chance for either side. We take one more minute off the clock. We're down to the one and 75. That is just outside of Montreal scoring range. 76 to 100 is the range. So let's see if we can flip our way into intermission. There could still be a chance. That's a zero minute. I like these dramatic minutes cards. 38, however, is no chance for either team. And two more minutes, so we're going to take it into the second intermission. The score after 40 minutes is 4-2. All right, and after 40, we return for third period action. Um, not sure if I should say anything or speak too soon about this, but the uh, it just occurred to me, it had crossed my mind that the Montreal Canadiens did have a really uh, good game in game, or good period, rather, the third period in game three. But we start things off here for the third in this one here, game four. And it's going to be two minutes off the clock to get things going. 63, that's no chance for either side. Uh, one minute off the clock, we're down to 17. And uh, 84, that will be a chance for Montreal here. Montreal, it's going to be E. E is Guy Lapointe. Guy Lapointe, he has it in the slot. He sneaks up in the play, and he's going to score, actually, to get Montreal to within one. Just three minutes in the third period. The Islanders seeing shades of Game 3 at the Forum right now. It is Guy Lapointe. Let's see who assisted on this one, L3-D2. That'll be L3-D1. So L3, that's Mario Tremblay with his second assist of the game, as well as Yvonne Cormway with his second point of the game. So it's going to be the point from Tremblay and Cormway. And I'll take the 53 seconds off this uh, card to give me um, exact seconds here. So at 2.07 into the... Uh, <clears throat> and Sorry, I lose my voice here a little bit. Into the third period, it's uh, it's uh, Guy Lapointe for Mario Tremblay and Yvonne Cormway as we play on. Uh, down to 14 minutes. Whoops. Uh, Imagine that. So the Islanders trying to hold on to the lead here with a 14 to go. And a 19, that'll be no scoring chance either way. So we go to the next card, 22. It's down to 13 minutes. 13 and 61, that's no shot for either side. So two more. 11, uh, 11 minutes now to go in the game. And uh, no dice. Okay, so 10. We have 10 to go here in the third period. 10. And once again, could we have another scrap? Uh, Nystrom and uh, Chartra, they might want to take uh, for round two here. Uh, let's see here. So two and two, five for fighting. No, actually, wait, penalty B, two and two, five for fighting. I'm going to ignore that. Let me flip another card here. We have four and four, five for fighting. We're going to have a second uh, Donnie Brook here. Actually, it's going to be Brent Sutter and Doug Risebro squaring off this time. This one has been pretty contentious. So with 10 minutes to go here, it's going to be night, uh, bleh, Sutter rather, not nice from again, but Sutter and Risebro and, uh, five for fighting. And this, that's just with about 10 to go, and this is just getting ever so messier. So we play on even strength, and down to nine minutes, Islanders up by one. Let's see, 32, that's no chance for either side. We take two more minutes off the clock, we're down to seven minutes. And uh, 39, that's going to be no chance for either side either. So we're down to four minutes now in the third period. Time running out for Montreal, let's see what this card will yield. Nothing. Uh, so we're going to take a little more time off the clock here, one minute to be exact. We're down to three minutes. And uh, 18, that's going to be no chance for either side either. Uh, three more minutes off the clock here, down to the final minute. Evidently, I would look at something like this as, especially if there's no, there is going to be a scoring chance here, though, down to the zero minutes. So in the final minute, whether or not Montreal is able to pull the goaltender, um, one can only assume. But, uh, A, that's going to be Steve Shutt. Steve Shutt, who was denied early in the game, and then he was able to get one on the board. Shutt this time, though, he's back at the blue line. And shut. Oh, Billy Smith's going to be tasked to make a big save here late in the game. Can he do it? He makes a save on a 7 to a 12. I'm going to flip this card and I'm going to look here for big save. That's a 4. That's a tie game. Steve Shutt manages to tie the game here with exactly 11 seconds to go. There's another late goal scored in this game. So shut with his second of the contest. And with this, it's more likely than not that we're going to go to sudden death. Uh, L2DB. So I'm going to look L1DB. That's shut. He can't assist on his own goal. And uh, centerman Jock Lemaire is actually going to get his second assist of the game here. He'll pick up another point. And let's see if there is a zero minute we will play on. But if not, we are going to go into overtime. And so it actually, let me double check here. Um, you know, we're going to, um, I'm thinking back to the uh, to the shootout rules. And uh, after the third period, you do flip one more, one more final card. But for lack of a better way of putting it. But 
Anyway, it looks like we're going to have the first uh, bout of sudden death here in the series. Of course, I forgot to change the score, which really rendered that kind of anticlimactic. But uh, I'll be back, I guess, for overtime. Okay, back for o uh, OT, sudden death overtime. And um, uh, this gets progressively more and more uh, smudged with each passing period. But Montreal's up 2-1 in this series. This is the first sudden death of this final. And I think it's also the first sudden death of the Season 2 Low Cap Cup uh, playoffs here. Again, low cap standing for League of uh, Champions and Presidents. Um, don't know why I keep repeating that. I'm not particularly, I don't know. It's a workable title, I guess. So anyway, we're going to kick things off here in overtime. Um, I've kind of run out of room. I guess I'll I'll use this portion of the of the sheet of paper. Uh, one minute off the clock here in 19, so that's no chance for either side. And we take another minute off the clock here, so we're two minutes into sudden death overtime. 61, once again, no chance for either side. And we're looking at two more minutes off the clock here, so that's 16. Are we going to get a penalty B? Now that would be weird and sudden death. Um, so once again, no chance either way. So we take another minute off the clock. We're five into the overtime now, and 59. That's no chance for either side either. Quiet start so far. Two more minutes. We're seven minutes into sudden death overtime. Uh, 30, that'll be no chance for either side. And we're going to take three more minutes off the clock, 10 minutes in now. And that, oh, that could be a penalty at all the wrong time here for Long Island. Could be a penalty B, in fact. Let's see what they've done. Uh, one one five for fighting. You know what? I'm just going to ignore that. They don't have a player number one. Um, if that's if that's against the rules and if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. We play on here. The refs keep their whistle in the pocket. Uh, so we're down to nine minutes here in the first overtime frame. And 21, that's going to be no chance for either side either. So we go, we play on. And we have eight to go here in the first uh Period of sudden death overtime. I feel like I've used that way too much already. 368, that's still no chance for either side. So uh, we're down to seven minutes now. Let's see here. Seven minutes and 20. Uh, this has been by far the quietest period so far this game, but we could have another uh, something else still to go here in the 13th minute. Uh, 70, that'll be no chance for either side. So we flip again. We're down to four minutes now. It's been a very silent overtime period so far. And uh, down to four minutes and 73, that'll be nothing either way either. So down to two minutes now here in OT1. And there could be a penalty against Montreal. That could be really detrimental here. T and Z3, they do have a T in their lineup. So standard two-minute penalty. I am going to um, penalize them. I'm going to, I'm going to allow that. So TZ3 here for two minutes. The Islanders with a golden opportunity in the final two here in uh, the first 20 of overtime. Um, in the first one, 25, that will be a power play scoring chance for the Islanders. And it's going to be H. H is uh, Brent Sutter, actually, probably the second power play unit. Sutter's in the slot here in the power play. And the Islanders have done it. They win 5-4 in overtime. We have a series that's tied at two. So just like that, we have a competitive series. We go back to Nassau Coliseum for game five, the final score in this one, 5-4 for the New York Islanders in overtime. And I got ahead of myself there. Let's see, Brent Sutter scored it. So... Look, I'm not faking this. I mean, I'm a Montreal Canadiens fan, but I this is what I want. I want a competitive series. Yes, I'd like to see Montreal uh, oust the Islanders in seven, much like they did the 71 Boston Bruins at the end of season one of the League of Champions and Presidents here. But make no mistake when I say that I want a good story and a good competitive uh, series, even if that does mean the Islanders winning for a change. I mean, it's really not as exciting even as a Habs fan, and I should be careful jinxing my team and saying this, but... Um, if I really don't believe that they can lose, then I mean, really, it isn't quite as exciting. So anyway, here, Brent Sutter, I digress, Brent Sutter, and we flip four assists, L2-D2. So as I said earlier, probably the second power play unit. Um, so I'm going to mix and match here. It was L2, so we're going to say Borm for the left wing. And I didn't even get the exact time on the goal there. I got so excited. At RW, we're going to go with Nystrom. Nystrom with two-thirds of a Gordie Howe hat trick. He fought Rick Chartra earlier, and uh, I should stop trying to say that name because I can't say it comfortably. And uh, I can say most of them, I think. But uh, Bob Nystrom and Bob Bourne. So a couple of Bobs here. Bob, Bob, and Brent for the Islanders power play uh, game-winning goal. And uh, the exact time for that one will take 57. So then that was in the second minute, I believe, here of the uh, power play. It doesn't matter. We'll say officially with 57 seconds to go here in the first uh, overtime period, it's going to be the Islanders by a final score of 5-4. So we're going to head back. As I said, to Nassau Coliseum for Game 5 with a series tied at 2. And um, this actually uh, probably was just a warm-up for another game of shootout hockey that I want to play a little bit later on with, um, if I can get them here another just out of arm's reach. Uh, it'll be the 2018-19, here, just a moment. It'll be the 2018-19 
Uh, Minnesota Wild up against the Winnipeg Jets. I wanted to take some time, do a little more research for this one. And so I thought it would warm up with something that I'm just a lot more accustomed to playing. Uh, but uh, stay tuned because uh, sooner or later, probably more the former than the latter, it'll be Minnesota up against Winnipeg. Anyway, I think this is my first shootout video, actually, that stretched past the 20-minute mark. But this one, we did have overtime here. We had a mess in the first of goals and a couple of fights there as well. I don't know about you, but I think this has been a great game, and I love this game. This is Shootout Hockey. You can get it at shoot, uh, shootouthockeygame.com. I'm trying to recall if there's WWW before that. But, um, yeah, here you have it once again. I'll say it for the final time. Here at the Forum in Game 4, uh, the Montreal Canadiens, they did battle back to tie in the third period uh, with uh, actually Steve Shutt with just 11 seconds to go. Come to think of it, glad I remember that because I didn't note it. And uh, but then with 57 seconds remaining in the first overtime, it was Brent Sutter here with the game winner. So anyway, that's definitely more than enough out of me for the time being. So bye for now.